Now we are coming to new perspectives, of, uh, perspectives in health tourism. We have uh, the General Secretary of the European uh, Spas Association with us today, Chile Mesuzi. Uh, we are talking about the corona recovery concepts in medical spas and climate health resorts because Europe has also already um, um, treatments for people who had corona and the spa, spa, as, uh, the ESPA made already uh, some efforts to, uh, about this to have products uh, for now and after the pandemic. So let's welcome Chile Mesuzi here with us on stage here at, uh, at the uh, ITB Berlin Convention. Hello, Chilla. Thank you, Thomas, and welcome to the next positive news, what we can do uh, for our health. And we will not talk about um, thesis. We already practicing that. Europe has a huge tradition of medical spas and natural remedies. And the European Spas Association is actually founded uh, 25 years ago as an umbrella organization for all European countries. They have natural remedies. And by um, evidence-based studies, we provide them a really serious um, treatments. We will talk today about prevention, but the focus of the discussion today is about corona recovery concept in many different European countries, which started, unfortunately, last year in May. And I hope our speaker, we invited three experts today uh, from France, from Germany, and from Hungary. And we will talk about three different subjects. And I hope after that you will be more familiar that Europe has a fantastic tradition and a very, very special know-how, which is related to spa resorts and health resorts. So welcome on board. And I first, our speaker, Mr. Claude Clojean Bouvier from France. He's secretary general of the French Spa Association, Medical Spas, more than 110 huge spas, if we are very exactly. And I have to mention also that our president, Mr. Thierry Dubois, is the president of the European Spas Association. So you will talk in the name of our president and also as one of the leading destinations in Europe. Uh, Mr. Bouvier uh, works also with health authorities also to improve um, the recognition of biology, as we call spa medicine. And France was one of the first who established authorized post-corona treatments and three column systems. So Mr. Bouvier, I would like to give you the floor and step by step, I will introduce our speaker. Uh, please start with your presentation, how France succeed to get the permission and authorize projects and three different target groups uh, for post-corona treatments. Good afternoon, Chila. Uh, my herzliche Grüße, my warm welcome and greetings to all of you wherever you are around the world. So I'm speaking from Paris. We're still partially locked down. Uh, with closed restaurant and cafe. And the same goes for our balneotherapy centers who were forced to close down for the second time at the end of October, and they are still closed up until now. So as a matter of fact, the situation is very difficult, dramatic, with a drop of 67% in the number of patients in 2020. Needless to say, we are suffering and we are yearning for the reopening of the establishments that could take place by the end of April or May, because there is some good news that we didn't have any uh, COVID cluster last year, although we had an attendance of 200,000 patients, but we had no COVID cluster. So on this basis, the authorities consider now the reopening of the uh, spa establishment. So what I, I want to start with is that, as in any other crisis, there will be good and bad things coming out of it. 
don't forget the origin of the word crisis, which re refers to differentiation or selection. We definitely know uh, the bad things for having endured them. And uh, while well, the good things are yet to come and let believe that the spa centers will be even more efficient and strict in applying sanitary and hygiene measures in the future for an enhanced security for guests. Another positive point is the widening of the scope of activities. And COVID-19 is for sure an opportunity in terms of activity. But don't get me wrong, rather than being a timely business opportunity, it should be looked at as moral duty, a kind of moral obligation to propose offerings to patients, if you believe like me that thermal cares can benefit to people who try to recover from COVID. So next slide, please. I can't see the slides, but... Um, okay, can you see the, the slide? I assume that you see the slides. And uh, with this in mind, we can have a closer look at how ballet therapy can contribute in the times of COVID. The first group of people who can benefit from ballet therapy is also the largest, namely the public at large. And uh, it has been established that chronic diseases such as diabetes obesity, heart conditions, high blood pressure, and are correlated with the severity of COVID. And as you know, the treatment of chronic diseases is a cornerstone of balneotherapy. So by treating these patients, we can help them better react if they get infected by the virus. It's also widely accepted that balneotherapy has a positive effect on the immune system, although this has not been precisely evaluated. Obviously, people who have received thermal treatments feel better, they have less pain, and it's quite legitimate to assume that the immune system is stronger. But again, let's be cautious when uh, pretending it, because there is no uh, real scientific evidence. The second group we can uh, target is made of non-infected people who nevertheless indirectly suffered from the consequences of COVID-19. And I'm referring here to people who were hurt in their body and their, their mind also, and the body, for example, those suffering from back pain due to bad work conditions at home, and mainly those who were psychologically affected by the pandemics in reaction to the confinement, the feeling of insecurity, or the heavy burden and pressure that led to uh, burnout. So obviously, a stay in a thermal center can be profitable for this kind of people. And the third group is made of infected people who try to recover from COVID. And this is the one we'll make a focus uh, on from now on. Next slide, please. So uh, referring to this survey that was made by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence in the UK, we can differentiate three uh, groups of people. The, the one who recover in the early stage, I mean, within a period of four weeks. The second group, people with ongoing uh, symptoms for a period between four and 12 weeks after the, the start of the acute symptoms. And the third group, uh, which is made of people who uh, still have symptoms uh, after 
12 weeks or, or more. And what we refer to post-COVID syndrome or long COVID, as it's currently uh, uh, said now, long COVID, is made of uh, the, the phases two plus three. It's quite a number of people. Uh, we, we assume that in France, there are more than 1 million and 200 people who uh, suffer or will suffer of uh, long COVID. Next slide, please. So the, the list of symptoms is quite extensive. I'm not going into it uh, into detail, but uh, one survey that was made in uh, Rouen uh, showed that uh, almost eight uh, in 10 people had persisting symptoms after the infection uh, uh, in the six months following the acute Face. And among the most common symptoms, the fatigue and muscle weakness is uh, the most frequent, and then sleep disturbance, and then anxiety and depression. And what is interesting when listing those symptoms is the fact that the treatment of these symptoms is a kind of daily routine in spas we are uh, familiar with the dealing of such conditions or disturbances. And this is one of the reasons balneal therapy is so relevant in this context, because we are used to treat those symptoms. Next slide. So what are the objectives of this uh, balneo therapy uh, post-COVID uh, program we built. The first objective, of course, is to allow people to recover as far as possible over a period of three weeks, because the duration of the stay is three weeks. We don't pretend to cure people, of course. Three weeks is a too short duration, but they can make some good progress and worthy progress over that period of time. What is also important is the fact that people uh, could realize they are able to continue by themselves on the way to recovery once they are back at home. And this requires that they uh, acquire, they get acquainted to the techniques and skills to build at home what they have acquired uh, during the stay. Next slide. So actually, the, the program itself relies on two types of resources. First of all, of course, the usual basket of uh, hydrothermal cares, uh, which relies on the use of uh, heat and, of course, the uh, physical mineral qualities of waters. And the patient will receive from four to six cares, treatments per day, over a period of 18 days. So it usually makes uh, 72 cares over the stay. And the second part of this program, of course, is uh, the ones develop in uh, re-education centers. And we are not so familiar in France with them. This is quite new for us. And uh, it's essential that the, the patient uh, return to the level of independence prior to the disease. So this calls for various techniques such as ventilatory control, an appropriate level of uh, muscular efficiency and a satisfactory balance. So the physiotherapist is the key person. Of course, it's a multidisciplinary approach, team, 
that it's the, the physiotherapist is the most important uh, person at this stage. Next slide, please. So I, I will not go into detail, but this is a flow chart um, showing how things work and the different uh, partners, the prescribing doctor, the patient, the spa center, and the spa doctor. At the top of it, there is one thing uh, I would like to highlight, and this is also a key factor. Please, next slide. The, the first key factor we discovered was to avoid that contraindicated patients access the SPA results. And by contraindicated uh, patients, we refer to patients uh, uh, which are under oxygen therapy who are having a severe sequela, psych uh, pulmonary fibrosis. Of course, we don't can we, we can't treat those kind of patients. So it's very important that they uh, don't go to spa uh, with the hope of uh, being uh, uh, relieved because these are fixed permanent sequelae and uh, of course this uh, we, we, we cannot uh, treat them correctly. So in order to avoid this the spa center sends kind of form and the the patient and the prescribing doctor they have to fill in the form uh, making sure there is no uh, error in the uh, in the prescription uh, mr bouvier may i ask you for closing words and yes. the final conclusion thank you yes uh next Next slide, please. There is an evaluation process. We have a lot of assessments because we have uh, to uh, evaluate the progress made by the curist. And then, of course, next slide, which will be my final slide. A few words on the economic background. This- uh, Next slide. Okay. Yes. Okay. Economic background. Yep, exactly. Now we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this three-week thermal treatment is financed at sixty-five percent by the National Health Insurance Fund, and the post-COVID program itself uh, will receive. We we hope so. The same type of uh, subsidizing from the National Health Insurance. That means. Uh, between 50 to 65 percent of uh, financial help. So it's too early to, uh, to compile uh, a balance sheet of the program, but one thing is for sure that we have received a very positive welcome from the authorities and the patients, and undoubtedly this will contribute to consolidate the way people look at balneotherapy and this will integrate balneotherapy more deeply in the healthcare system. Thank, Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank Merci you. beaucoup. It was fantastic introduction about medical spa balneology, as we call spa medicine. And you represented the management and the lobby, and you, we will see how many different um, expert we need in our team to be successful and to be more recognized. And as we see, biology, spa medicine can have a fantastic future as you talked about rehabilitation and we know that this subject will grow and um, people investing more on health and they will take care of the health conditions. So our next expert is coming from Germany, from Nordenai, from the lower Saxony and the Nordic islands of Germany, Mr. Dr. Friedhard Raschke. And we will go to the medical expertise because we talked about spa medicine, 
spa medicine on the seaside in the mountains where most of our clients and the tourists used to have the holiday. So we will have an expert. Mr. Raschke was the head of the research um, uh, department for medical rehabilitation. And he has a huge expertise about um, immunology, about sleep disorders, um, allergy. And he will bring us to the Climate Health Resort and he will explain fresh air and the special conditions. We will talk a little bit more after rehabilitation from Mr. Buvi about, immun uh, about prevention. So the floor is yours, Mr. Raschke. In this short talk, I would like to first show the stimulating functions of the immune system, which are crucial for severeness and duration of COVID-19. And a second, I would talk about shortening of long-term symptoms of COVID-19 means of telesso and climatotherapy. Because not everybody is so familiar with this kind of therapy, we have on the next slide the definition for it. The lasso therapy is the application of a healing power of seawater and maritime climate. It comprises in the sea bars, outdoor and indoor, climatic components such as cold water stimuli, wind, lacking of allergens, solely inhalation, and UV radiation. It is the application of silt, algae, and sand. And very important, additionally, exercise and physical activity close to the beach. Let's make a small experiment on this topic. On this slide, we record a skin temperature at the front and the cheek, the face, for one indoor morning. The other day, we have a 30-minute walk outside at a temperature of 9 degrees centigrade. You can see very clearly that the initial values during the walk drop after the walk, and then considerably exceed initial values. This is reactive increase of microcirculation and increase of hyperemia. This is the hidden secret of immune stimulation. Increase of microcirculation is followed by more exchange and traffic of immune cells. It's followed by increased migration and messenger substrates. Let's have a look at the lymphocytes largely involved in COVID-19 disease. The helper cells, CD4, and the regulating cells, CD8, should have the normal ratio of 2 to 1 in a healthy organism. This slide gives the balance of these two. CD4 on the left promotes inflammation, severeness of the corona disease. CD8 stops it. These cells suppress inflammation in order to return to normality. Thus, in reality, the ratio of these two cells marks severeness and duration of the disease. The next slide gives the results 
for three different autoimmune diseases for these lymphocytes. First, atopic dermatitis, second, bronchial asthma, and third, rhinitis. On the right, in comparison to the other diseases, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is the control group, which is without immune failure. Normalization within three weeks of thalasso and clamato therapy is very evident. Next, I would like to give a survey to all the various stimuli which can strengthen immune functions and keep the complex system well regulated. First, we have old stimuli by thalasso, by climate, or by knipe therapy, leading to the effects of hardening. In addition, we know that gymnastics, sports, or any kind of increasing physical activity contributes to this. And third, we know that relaxation techniques, stress reduction, and as known since a couple of years, the amount of restored sleep has a lot for normalization and stimulation of immune functions. The basic principle of these stimuli altogether imply increased cell and messenger exchange. The circulatory, the lymphatic system and in the tissue. Additionally, the effect of fruits, vegetables, vitamins, and minerals by nutrition is well known. UV radiation operates additionally. Factors altogether have impact on immune systems efficiency. In respect to post-COVID-19 syndrome, I would like to show some recent results on fatigue and sleep disorders. In a study with 350 patients suffering from fatigue and burnout, we had substantial reduction of the symptoms, including sleep disturbances. The next slide gives the data from several questionnaires summarized to an index. Investigation took place before, after, and one, three, and six months after rehabilitation. Here, this is the cutoff level for fatigue, and these are the results for a control group got the standard rehabilitation program with thematic sports and educative training. In comparison to this group, at a group with intervention, additionally practiced gymnastics twice a week and additionally train to execute physical activity even after rehabilitation. So, in conclusion, my last slide comes up the effect of maritime spa, thalasso, yeah. and climatotherapy. All these are applicable to climatic health resources. There is an improvement of immune functions working as prevention, and second, there is normalization of immune functions leading to reduction of fatigue and sleep disorders. 
Thus, we have an impact of this kind of therapy for the symptoms of post-COVID-19 syndrome. Thank you very much for this very important insight of medical results and research. And that's also a proof that we work on evidence medical-based studies. And it's uh, medical spas are not day spas and cosmetics. So you see that a very high level of medical competence is existing in this resort. And later on, we have seen management lobby, we have seen medical competencies. And finally, we have to be on the market to promote and to create the right marketing. And I would like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Mike Wallis from Hungary. Uh, Mike is a favorite speaker and European spa congresses, and he has also 25 or more experience in product development and sales strategies, um, also in quality management. And Mike, last year you published also a book about spa management. So I would like to ask you about the opportunities, future. Let's go a little bit to the marketing topics and promotion. How to make much better um, uh, sales promotion for the health resorts of Europe. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I think, uh, first of all, I would also like to start by looking at how we can improve some of the offers that we're currently doing at the moment. I'm just gonna show one, I put it up on the screen. This is a respiratory recovery program for people with respiratory diseases, but also for people that have suffered from COVID-19 long-term effects. And it's quite a good program. And it's really positive to see spas putting these programs into the market. Some really good treatments in there. Some of the treatments, I would question whether they're right for that package, but it's a good start. But also to mention, this is a niche market. It's not going to bring in thousands of guests, but it's a, it's a worthwhile yeah, product to yeah. have. The next slide is an immunity booster um, package, and it was really interesting to hear what our colleagues had to say. Um, as it was mentioned, there isn't really enough evidence-based um, uh, research about this. Um, however, it, this is a start from some of the uh, different health spas. I would question whether three nights, six um, treatments is really going to boost your immunity. That's why I was very pleased to see the previous speaker talking in depth about the lasso therapy and showing evidence-based results. Okay, so it's a little bit slow. There's the slide. I think what's important for health spas is they ask key questions. Who, are, who will be our guests? Why will they be coming? Why do we want them to come? What treatments and services do they want in the future? What is our destination's USP? And also, what is our country's USP? If the country is a red country and has lots of coronavirus cases and isn't controlling the vaccine rollout well, then it doesn't matter how good the spa is. So we are dependent on the country. So here are some quotes I took off some academic research papers about the mental effects of COVID-19. The world as we know it has changed. It's not as secure as it was. Uh, we woke up one day, I rent out lots of apartments. That's how I was living. I thought I was set up for my life. And then one day, from one day to the next, all the security was wiped out. We've also been held up in little claustrophobic apartments. We've had lots of anxiety. We've also had lots of time to think. So chasing careers, material wealth, wasting energy on stupid things. This we've had time to think about. And I think a lot of people have thought about what's important, appreciating what we have, our relationships, giving time for ourselves, mental balance. And these are the things that I think that health spas can focus on. And some, as I, as I will show you, are focusing on at the moment. So what do people want? mental health and balance. They want to get out of these little apartments. They want space to breathe, um, wild nature. 
They want to go to locations where they don't need a PCR test and lots of bureaucracy. They want to go somewhere that's easy to get to. They want to feel safe. They definitely don't want crowds and they want to go to somewhere that's clean and hygienic. So this sort of tourism, I think is finished for the next few years. Large cruise ships, uh, buffets with people breathing all over them, crowded hotels. So this is, I think, this is history for a long time. So the health uh, destinations have quite a lot of advantages. Excuse the fire engine outside. <laughs> Mostly they're in domestic locations. A lot are in countries or in neighboring countries. They're easy to get to. They're normally in very beautiful locations. Medical, clinical standards of hygiene. Um, you know when you go to a health destination, they have hospital standards of hygiene. They're also not crowded if you compare them to leisure resorts. And they can offer accommodation possibilities like apartments, suites, accommodation where you're not crowded with other people. And if things do go wrong, they've got medical staff on site that know how to handle the situation. So what sort of services can health spas offer guests in the next few years? Beautiful locations, healthy climates, as we saw from our last presentation. Physiotherapy was mentioned, huge potential with our highly trained physiotherapists and all the latest methods that are coming out. Water and heat treatments to relax. Um, oxygen respiratory treatments for respiratory diseases and also benefiting the immune system. And then spas also offer a lot of um, complementary services like uh, acupuncture, uh, reflexology, and so on. So, to sum up, I see that uh, health destinations have a huge opportunity if they can move a little bit beyond the traditional balneotherapy for physical rehabilitation and make it balneotherapy for an all-round health product. And if I just get my page, sorry, because I can only see a, the, the slide very small on the screen. Um, healthy lifestyle prevention mindfulness. We, I mentioned earlier this mental stress that people have been under. If health spas can open up their programs to cater for this market, I see a very positive future. Diet and nutrition. This also could be developed substantially in the future. I've just read an amazing book called How Not to Die by a Dr. Greger. And it's all the nutrition information we know, eating a plant-based diet, but it relates it to specific diseases. And I think health spas can really offer um, a wider range of services and treatments if they expand their offer in the nutrition uh, area. And incorporating this mind-body uh, approach. Um, this is a spa that I came across, and this is how they are advertising their post-COVID recharge program. And I really like it because they focus in on this emotional and mental balance, um, recovery for not just body, but mind, body, and soul, stress relief. It, it says physical awareness there. It should say uh, mental and emotional aware awareness as well. And as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, people going away to somewhere safe, secluded, and having time for themselves. So I think that's my message. Um, before I go, I would like to uh, plug my book. Um, I basically put in 25 years worth of experience of managing fitness and um, a medical health spas, and I combined everything I learned, and it's all in one book. It's very practical. It's not uh, highly theoretical, but it gives clear advice on how to manage a health spa successfully. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much for this summary why medical spas and climate head resort have a much better chance on the tourist market. And the future looks really uh, perspectively very positive, as we heard it from the management, from the medical expert side, and also from the marketing aspect. Uh, you mentioned uh, hygienic. Uh, it will be one of the key decisions where people want to go, and it will be one um, uh, also uh, very important decision how, this, how we choose destination. And the European Spa Association has already a Europe Spa Certification System, and newly we created the Hygiene Management Certification just uh, to know about it. And, um, of course, the list of the advantage. Uh, we are sustainable green tourism, and this is always on the agenda of the European Union and worldwide. So these historical uh, spa towns uh, give this opportunity to have sustainable tourism. And yesterday, I heard by one press event by Switzerland, Austria, and Germany that we have to move from destination marketing to destination management. So it's time to focus on smaller circle. As you said, we will not travel at the moment for very long distances. Medical spas with the medical competence directly on the resort. It's very important, and this is the uh, uh, added value also beside the natural remedies. So I would like to ask all of our speakers for one conclusion. How do you see the future? And I hope positively. I will ask first Claude Eugène, how is the future for medical spas in France? Well, at this time it's quite dull, but we expect a very uh, sharp uh, recovery in the second uh, semester, and we have uh, lots of uh, reservations because people are waiting to, um, to, 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 uh, to, be, to be back uh, to spa results. There is a very uh, huge move, and they are eager to, uh, uh, to, to get the, the treatments again. Thank you very much. You have to know that European spas represent 20 countries in Europe, from Iceland to Bulgaria, from the Baltic countries to Spain. So all countries, they have natural remedies. And as you see, most of our members are really very updated and they move on with new concept also to help for corona survivors and to keep people healthy as well. So Mr. Rashka, what is your opinion about the future of health resort? And the Nordic Sea Thalassotherapy? No, you don't hear us? Yes. Yes, please. I think there is a revival uh, of uh, the medical on the uh, Thalasso and Pamato and the maritime uh, applications because the immune system is involved and this is brand new to all of us. Thank you. Mike, the closing sentence for you. So I think whatever the future holds in the next few months, it's going to be positive for health spa resorts. However, if they can implement what I've suggested and broaden their program, I think it could be incredibly, um, uh, incredibly successful in the future. So I have to say one closing sentence at the moment. The only country in Europe where you can visit all tourism uh, attractions is Bulgaria. Also, in many countries like Serbia, spas are open. We heard that uh, France will open soon, mid of April, hopefully. Uh, for rehabilitation, you can visit in Slovakia and the Czech Republic, in Lithuania, uh, in Italy, and also in France, in Slovenia. So there are special uh, uh, rooms for that. And uh, I want to say merci beaucoup, vielen Dank und köszönöm szépen, and hope to see you in the medical resort and spa resort soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.